Hey everybody, it's uh, Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. Thought I would ramble with you guys and gals for a little while. Yes, forearm shot. All right, um, something I still see all the time in all my social media feed, and, and it's literally cases if I see different influencers and, and coaches just flat out saying, you don't have to squat, bench, and deadlift, or muscle group, or for hypertrophy. And to me, this is a big red flag because, you know, it's almost my counter response to them is going to be, okay, well, you don't have to use machines for hypertrophy. But do you see how meaningless that is? You, just got, you, don't, you, you don't have to use whatever. You know, and that's also, I mean, I could give you guys a, a great example. Um, you don't have to use a hammer to drive a nail. You can get a nail through a board with other objects. A brick works just as well as a hammer, right? But it's so weird because this goes in phases. No matter how long the squat, bench, and deadlift have been time-proven, effective exercises, including bodybuilding champions, there's always people who feel this need to somehow invalidate uh, the, the use of these lifts all the time. And it's, it's just so strange. And I don't, <clears throat> I don't understand the desire to do this or why it becomes fashionable or trendy because they're great exercises. All three of these exercises work a lot of muscle through your body. We could argue the deadlift may not work all of it through a full range of motion, but it's still a great exercise. That's probably the only odd man out. Like I, I can understand why at least the conventional or even the sumo deadlift, people will say, mm, well, maybe, maybe it's not that great of a hypertrophy exercise either these, these lack of length in positions. But if we ever have data coming back suggesting mid-range positions have a lot of additional hypertrophy potential, then it's back in, you know. It's, but it's a lot of this data-driven stuff. When they don't even have evidence showing that uh, deadlifts don't produce great hypertrophy either. So it, it's a really fascinating one to me because there's been so little research into the area. And of course, we know exercise science studies have their, their flaws and limits. It's really bad. It's really bad. Like to the point where you almost can't draw good conclusions from the existing data. You know, it's, it's pretty bad. But if you go off the only evidence we have that looked at deadlifts and hypertrophy, the deadlift caused the most hypertrophy in the study. We only have one, though. That's the problem. It's not it, 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 very, 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 very small uh, number of participants in the study, right? So uh, there, there is that. But I don't understand the argument against the squat or the bench press. Properly formed, the bench press can take your pecs into a deep stretch. You just have to perform it in a way that puts them in a deep stretch. Okay, it really is that simple. And I understand in some cases that why people are like, well, it's easier to find a position that gets the deepest stretch with dumbbells. And that's, that's the take home there. It is easier to find that position. It requires less skill because it doesn't matter if you arch or not, right? It doesn't matter what, how wide your grip is. You're still going to be able to get the dumbbells lower than your chest. Okay. But people mess that up too. And they still have rep those, in which case a dumbbell has no argument in its favor, right? And let's be very clear on that. A dumbbell stopping short of the chest will absolutely produce less muscle growth than a bench press touching the chest with a barbell. So we need to be clear on that one. Because their dumbbells isn't magical, it's because in theory, in some cases, you can get a deeper stretch. Not everybody can, by the way. But, but that's the idea. And it doesn't matter if you pause or not, because you'll still get the, the stretch reflex, right? Because you can't bounce it off your chest. So it's, it's just easier to not mess it up for people who simply are clueless about how to lift. That's the point. It is, it is a little harder to mess it up unless you do half reps. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. Uh, the leg stuff and other stuff doesn't make sense. Squats are great for legs, are great for lower body. Time proven. You know, but it's always this argument, well, that can be a limiting factor. Well, why do you have such a weak back? What's, what's going on here? Maybe this is a problem you need to fix. I would almost argue that if 
your back is a limiting factor on the squat, the squat is not the issue. The squat is informing you there's a problem. That's how I view it. I look at it as going, that's a sign of an imbalance that might need to be corrected. Right? The squat is telling you this. It's a useful tool, feedback tool in that regard. Like, what's going on with your back? What's going on with your hamstrings? What's, what's the problem here that you need to fix? You know, but then what is their other counter argument than machines? Machines are very, very limiting themselves, right? Because again, if we're going to come back over the same argument used against the deadlift can be used against a lot of machines. How many machines are designed so perfectly that you can adjust them to where every person can get into very long lengthened positions? In many cases, you can't. A lot of machines, there's a lot of active insufficiency occurring, right? There's some, a lot of active insufficiency in a lot of cases. There's a lot of cases where machines bottom out at partial ranges of motion for, for a lot of people with the same amount of adjustment. You know, when those things start happening, the machine is inferior. So we need to be clear on that. And people say, what well, helps isolate them? But there's no evidence that isolating a muscle more improves growth. There's, there's actual no reason to believe that. There really isn't. It's not even logical. It's not, it's not consistent with human biology. It's because, hey, you want a muscle to grow more, so train it more. All right. But the machine doesn't have an advantage in that regard. In other words, your pectorals don't get isolated necessarily more on a machine than they do on the bench press. Meaning your pecs working harder. No, not necessarily. A lot of it's going to depend on what sort of ranges of motion it's set up to allow you to get into. And they're always in a fixed plane. They're also very likely to cause uh, different sorts of joint problems if they're putting you in a position that's not really good anatomically for you. So, you know, what are the alternatives? If they're like, if, if the barbell lifts are not what you want to use for, for training, you're, you're limited to dumbbells, which again, people mess up dumbbells. Uh, dumbbells are definitely not going to give you the lower body you want. It's too hard to load enough weight. I mean, if we're going to get back over and talk about balance and awkwardness, I mean, having to strap up to dumbbells all the time, trying to get enough weight into play, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Trying to balance everything um, for lower body stuff, no, it's silly. I do understand their point for upper body, and I like a lot of dumbbell work for upper body. But it's still not necessarily better. And then we come back to the point of, I think people say this because they just don't know how to teach the squat bench and deadlift because they have a novice level of knowledge as coaches and influencers themselves, right? They don't know how to train. They don't know how to coach. And so they just make it easier and uh, skip these things. And I think the other thing is because they're hard work, right? Squats and deadlifts are hard work. And I think these people who say this generally, they just like to appeal to their lazy clients or just, or to display their own incompetence or just to sound trendy as if physique champions for generations have not relied heavily on these three lifts, which they have. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.